It started, I guess, with a performance that we did at Anthony Gormley's studio. I've been working at the Royal Academy of Music uh, as a Henry Moore Research Fellow, looking at links between sculpture and music. And people from Tate were there, and I was asked if I would be interested in responding to the Rothko Show. I begin the, the process as a visitor, uh, as someone who's almost not viewing the work for the first time, but reviewing it in that context for the first time. On the other hand, another part of the process is to become as familiar as possible with uh, the context in which the artwork is created, if I can find out about that. It's a question of just trying to find any way into the process because, especially with the, the, the Rothko paintings, it's such a, there's such a huge mass of possibilities where you could start in so many different ways. So I was incredibly stuck, and it really wasn't until I came to see the paintings when the show opened. I sat in the cafe uh, just across from the show. And th these are the, 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 the bits of score that I've actually got, and I very absent-mindedly just drew out some of the shapes and started putting uh, dots for notes in the corners. I thought, this is too, so crude, I'm never going to be able to use this. It's just, you know, I can't get away with it. But in a sense, it gave me something so simple that I felt, well, the paintings have a simplicity, a simplicity that can be applied in a very complex way. So I've got to be quite courageous and allow myself to be very simple. From that very, very simple shape, um, I came up then with something a lot more complex when I started to place lots of this sort of internal texture that I started to come up with over the, the space of the object. This is a mediating point between the visual and the sounded. Uh, and, and then from this I start to evolve my score. <laughs> also think about the emotional climate and, and try and learn about the intentions of the artist and, and use my own responses in, in that sense as well. Uh, I will look for things such as evocations of movement or terrain uh, and, and try and create musical analogues to that. Um, it, it's really a whole variety of things. And in the hang that you've got, you can really see the sense of um, a sequence and kind of variations on a theme and there is a rhythm and a sense of rhythm going between uh, the paintings. It's not a rhythm in the sense that has a beginning and end, it's almost cyclical. The paintings help to, in a sense, to articulate something about the music. And the music hopefully articulates something essential about the painting. So I hope that the two will sit together and that there's a, there is a kind of exchange going on and that they reinforce each other. Rothko in particular has been very, very difficult because he says things that contradict quite violently. My feeling on, on that is he was never wanted to be pinned down. He never wanted anyone to um, put his work into a compartment. I have a horrible feeling he would review what I'm doing as completely redundant, in the sense that the paintings already aspire to a mu have, having a musical resonance. Uh, and that was what I first felt when, when I began, was thinking, and, you know, is there anything I can add to these paintings? Because they already have a sense of singing and humming. Mm -hmm. 